Hello and welcome back to my large scale overview of the 53D series from QNAP. I believe this is video four or five, depending on where I place a Plex video. And today I want to talk to you guys about how to enjoy video on your NAT. Now, a network attached storage device has become a very, very desirable de device for enjoying films, box sets, music, looking at your photos and more. And on, in this series of videos, I have talked about different ways in which you can enjoy the, the multimedia on your NAS and today I want to focus on video. I want to talk about box sets, movies, how to watch your favorite TV shows and ultimately why having a NAS for these things is such a good thing. Now there are loads of apps and by loads I am talking tons but today I'm really focusing on two applications more than anything else. I am looking at QNAP's own video station application and Plex Media Server. Now, prior to this video, a few hours ago, I did install Plex Media Server on this NAS for the very first time. And moving forward from that, I'd like to talk to you guys about the advantages of utilizing a NAS for video and how you can. It's also worth highlighting that I am utilizing the 653D. However, the 653D isn't the only one in the D series. There is a two bay and a four bay, the 253D and the 453D. And indeed, if you are utilizing a NAS with an Intel based processor, pretty much everything I'm gonna talk about today will be as the same here as it will be on your NAS. So let's go through what you can do. Now there's three parts to this video, the video station part, the Plex Media Server part and the HD station part. And I'm going to leave that one till last because it's still got lots of applications being added all the time. Now, within Video Station, you can largely browse any file on your NAS if you so choose. Video Station is available uh, as a desktop application. It's available as a client app for um, your mobile phone, be it Android or iOS, and it's accessible here via the web browser. But via the web browser version, it's probably one of the last places a number of you will actually use to watch multimedia. I'm utilizing OBS to record this video, but as good as Video Station is, it's not really at its peak when utilized here via the web browser. Don't get me wrong, you've got a lot of the smart features. You've got the ability to browse individual folders on the NAS, or you can go through the device um, with scanning happening in the background, scanning certain directories that you can set up with multimedia console. If we get that tool open, just to show you a second there, with multimedia console, you can actually dictate exactly where you want the NAS to find all your multimedia. So in the case of video station, we can look here and select these three folders. We can add more if we choose or remove folders if we choose, and then, the um, video station application in conjunction with multimedia console will then scan those folders and get all of our media. At the same time, it will use online resources like IMDB and review sites to find information in the background as well as get subtitles and more for our media. So this is TV shows and movies that we own that is on the NAS and then it, uh, information for those is then pulled and displayed here. Case in point, if we look at the matrix, so if we look at the information tab for the matrix, we can see that even though this is a copy of the matrix that I've got on the NAS, we can see that we've got the movie poster, we've got information about the resolution of the file, the name of the file, where it lives on the NAS, the category, we can add tags if we want. But on top of that, we've got the cast, we have a description pulled from IMDB, we've got reviews, we've got the works. All of that was pulled with the app. We just brought a copy of the matrix and that wasn't like some fully fledged metadata filled version. It's just a bog standard copy of the matrix and then the app has done the rest. Now, when we play a video, it's worth mentioning that because I'm utilizing screen recording software, chances are that video is not going to display very well for you guys at home. Um, and I'm going to disable the audio because the last thing we want is to get some horrible feedback. But say we want to play the Matrix. We can play it in that window and it will now play it in the background for us over the local area network. And we've got lots of options open to us here in the user interface. So at the bottom, we've got the option of flicking through and removing the background information if we choose. Down here, we can add subtitles if we choose, which are then downloaded in the background from other websites if we choose. 
or if we've got the file on the NAS, we can download it. On top of that, we can head to the settings menu here where we can change the file format if we so, cho so choose and lower the resolution in real time to minimize or increase the size of the file we're watching. Maybe if we're on a meter data connection or we're using a device with a lower resolution, we can then scale up and down the video if we so choose. If there are multiple soundtracks that have different languages, we can use that option there. And we can even change a lot of the options with regard to the speed of playback and the audio levels. Um, if we go to the top menu there, we have a few options that are quite unique and probably lesser used than others, but still nevertheless useful. The 360 option allows you to watch movies using VR headsets and it creates the VR um, scope effect for you to utilize and watch movies on VR headsets. Um, and if we move around there with 360 view, we can switch back and look at the other options. Now, transcoding video, as mentioned, we can do offline transcoding if we have other versions available or transcode the entire file, whether we want to do it in advance or do it live. If we have a look at the top options, we can leave bookmarks on individual parts of the video for bits that may be important to us. Let's leave that plan because it's paused during the transcode option. And on top of that, we have the option to stream to network media devices. Now, right now, we have HDMI output, but if we had media devices in the network environment that can be cast towards, such as Amazon um, Fire TV, Chromecast and more, we're able to send the information, uh, the video and all the audio directly to those sources. But as mentioned, <clears throat> watching these movies via the web browser is not the best way to enjoy them. And although you have lots of information there in the background about individual files and folders, it's still not perfect. We've got TV shows, we've got music videos, we've even got the test videos as well that we've downloaded from the Internet Archive and jellyfish.com for lots of 4K and 1080p testing that we're going to do in later videos. There's loads of options open to you and lots of ways in which you can stream and enjoy your media. You can even directly share individual files with other users if you so choose. So there's lots of options open to you. You can also create smart folders and smart lists in the background as well as create bespoke collections of your multimedia within Video Station. But once again, you, enjoying this multimedia via a web browser is most certainly not the best way to do it. Luckily, with tools like the DLNA media server application and the fact that Video Station has a lot of that information built into it that is then shared over DLNA, there's lots of ways in which you can enjoy your media over network as well as the mobile phone applications for iOS and Android. The second and better way, in my opinion, to enjoy media on your QNAP NAS is with Plex Media Server. Do check out my video where I talked about how to set up Plex Media Server for your, 60, um, your 53D NAS. But we've already set up or at least started the beginnings of getting the metadata put together for our Plex Media Server. If we go there and go to the NAS we're able to see all of the files that are on our NAS drive. And on top of that, if we make our way down, we can already see that some of the metadata has already started to be scraped, or there is a little bit more happening in the background. Plex Media Server allows us to do a whole bunch of things. We can find out more about actors that are in TV shows, as well as find out more about the things that we have on them with regards to reviews from IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes and more. We can enjoy and watch files here directly from the web browser. And even then, we can still transcode and alter those files accordingly. With transcoding actions, I can see my GPU utilization has leapt up as soon as I've played that. Um, but those are the main ways in which a lot of you can enjoy video media on your NAS. Do take advantage of the multimedia console application to make sure that you're indexing the right folders. But this, of course, leads us to the third and certainly most QNAP-centric way to enjoy your media, and that is over HDMI. Now, for those that aren't aware, QNAP's uh, range of 53D series shares one factor in terms of HDMI along with a lot of their modern Intel-powered NASes, and that is that although I'm looking at the browser access point to this NAS, accessing it via a web browser here over the network, the HDMI port is a completely separate portal. You can go in here and either connect via the desktop 
the HDMI cable connected to uh, a PC, I'm sorry, a HDMI cable connected to like a monitor or a TV, and then use a keyboard and mouse or a remote control to browse, or we can access the HDMI output directly from within, from within the browser. We're gonna do that now, but it's worth bearing in mind, again, this is just because we're accessing it here remotely. Typically, HD Station is designed to be watched with an HDMI cable connected between the NAS and a monitor, as well as a KVM or control device. Now, as you can see here on screen, there's lots of applications pre-installed. We've got options here for HD player to watch our HD TV, video station, its own HDMI plugin, so all of the metadata, descriptions, smart collections, and more that we created are visible. But on top of that, we've also got other applications that allow us, allow us to enjoy multimedia too. Not just videos either, with music and photo station applications, as well as ones for enjoying our surveillance. But that's something for a different video. What's really interesting though, is when you go to the application center and add QNAP Club. Now, QNAP Club is the unofficial app center and it has loads, and I really do mean loads, of applications for your QNAP NAS. It's worth highlighting, these are unofficial apps and they are applications that are designed um, by um, homebrew enthusiasts. Some of them might be old QNAP apps that have been patched to work in the latest version that may have been removed. And there's everything from Netflix connection by connecting your Netflix account to your QNAP NAS to Plex Media Server over HDMI applications there. You've even got the likes of Kodi too. You have so many different applications that allow you to enjoy your media on your NAS over HDMI with a huge number of them having network support as well. If you do want to add the unofficial app center, bear in mind that by doing it, you may put yourself at risk because you are installing applications without a valid digital QNAP signature. But if you want to go ahead with it, go into the settings option up the top there, open up this menu, click the tick box here, and then go to the app repository, click add, and then add this URL here. When you click add, it will invite you to add that URL in this bar here. And the one you need is this one on screen, www.qnapclub.eu slash en slash repo.xml. That, once you add it and then click apply on the previous screen, will then add a new tab here under QNAP Club. And there's lots of different options here. And of course, if you're going to the entertainment section, there's lots of apps open to you. I will be going through some of the newest additions to the QNAP Club here, as well as checking out some of the newer Plex Media Server applications that have been added, and maybe even give that Netflix app a try. But this has been the best ways to enjoy video media on your QNAP NAS. If you have enjoyed this video, do let me know, and I will be updating and moving on to my next video, which will be about music on your NAS, which is gonna be real tough to do on a NAS, given uh, the limitations of copyright and uh, uh, content that can be used in a YouTube video. But let's see if we can get by. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you did. And if you have got anything that you want to do with your uh, 53D NAS that I've not covered yet, do let me know in the description. I'm still going to be covering virtual machines, surveillance, and music still to come. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.